Howdy y'all, it's Jordan Smith. So first, let me get a couple of points of contention out of the way so that I don't get a million comments below. First of all, we are using flex duct on this house. Yes, I said flex duct and I don't care. I like it. I like it better than rigid for this application. Whole nother topic for a whole nother time. Um, my apologies to Allison Bells and Risinger. I'm an unapologetic flex duct fan. So I am using flex duct. If you want to find out why, comment below with, hey, why do you like it? I'd love to see a video on that and I'll talk about why. Second point of contention. If you look up here, you can see that my roof deck on this Belleville farmhouse is spray foamed. Now, remember, we have tech shield up there. And remember I said, if you're using a radiant barrier like tech shield, you cannot let your insulation come into contact with your radiant barrier because it totally defeats the point of having radiant barrier up there. I've totally defeated the point of having radiant barrier up there by putting spray foam completely up against it. It's doing zero good. If you would like to know why I did that, comment below, hey, why'd you do that? And I'll do a video on it. Long story short, I was sort of straddling two theories of good insulation and air sealing practices, but I wasn't firmly in either camp, and I was afraid because of the way that I was straddling it that I might have been making bad decisions. So I took a step back, swallowed my pride, and did a proven, known, we do this all the time, insulation process. So things I do differently might be a whole complete different video. So getting those two things out of the way, let's talk about the reason we're all here today. And that is to talk about April air and indoor air quality. So full disclosure, April air sent me these units, um, but they're not paying for this video. These opinions are my own. Um, I called April air and said, hello, April air, please send me these units because I'd love to do a video in exchange for it. And they said, sure. Um, I could have called any number of people, but I really like the April Air products because they focus solely on indoor air quality. If you look at one of my previous videos card over here, Texas is a big state. This is what is a little pet peeve of mine when people from other non-US countries say, oh, well, you should build exactly like this because we build our whole country exactly like this. Well, in the States, you have a lot of different climate zones, and in Texas, you have a lot of different climate zones. So up in the panhandle of Texas, where we're building, or where we just finished up, a similar farmhouse build to this, we actually had to put a humidifier in, because it's so dry, so much of the year up there, that we actually have to put humidity into the house to make everything happy, trying to push it up to about that 40 to 45% from as low as five to 10, um, relative humidity outside. So we're trying to push that humidity up. Down here in closer to the Gulf of Mexico, or closer to Houston here, we've got the complete opposite problem. We are trying to lower the amount of humidity that is in our homes. In fact, right now, standing up here in the second floor of this house, I don't know what the relative humidity is, but I'm going to guess it's around 90 degrees and it's around probably 80% humidity, 85. I mean, it's just, I'm sweating. It feels muggy. It feels not good. We really want to drop that humidity. So to do that, we have got the April Air dehumidifier. So this pulls the moisture out. Now, your HVAC system also pulls the moisture out. And this is why if you live in this area, you have those shoulder months to where if you're not running a dehumidifier, what do you do? It's not hot enough to run your AC, but it's still uncomfortable. So you go crank your AC, it, say, it says that it's 74 in your house, and you turn it down to 65, 63, 62, whatever it is, as cold as you can get it, to run your air conditioner. And what happens is you're pulling that humid air. It's not hot humid air, it's cold humid air, but you're pulling that humid air through and you're actually condensing the moisture out on the coils and that's running out your condenser drain, your condensate drain, and drier air comes out. So you put on a couple of jackets and you get all bundled up because it's cold, but at least it's dry and it feels better to your skin. Well, that's not a very efficient way of doing it because one, you're not comfortable, two, you're running a big piece of equipment that isn't intended to dry, it's intended mainly to cool. This works on the same 
principle as the big AC, but it's only looking at dehumidifying and not cooling. This is the April Air 1850 dehumidifier, and it does the same thing as your air conditioner in the fact that it pulls humid air across a cold coil, the humidity condensates as liquid, and then is drained out through the drains in the home, and dry air is then introduced to the HVAC system. Where it's a little bit different than the HVAC system is its primary purpose is only dehumidification, so it doesn't cool the air as much as your HVAC. So it's sort of the opposite of what your air conditioner does. Air conditioner is mainly there for cooling, does some dehumidification. This does mainly dehumidification, but it does some cooling of the air going through it. However, because this whole unit is sitting there and because of the law of thermodynamics, it's actually producing more heat than it's cooling. So it's cooling the air inside the ductwork, but the heat, the net heat gain in the house is higher. I don't really care. If you really care about that and you're really getting super sensitive about your heat loads, um, you can get different versions that have the mini split outside by different manufacturers, but come on. I mean, you're, you're really splitting hairs there on trying to get pretty nerdy about your heat load. For us, I, I am fine with a little bit of heat load that this April Air um, produces because it dries the air so much better. We're able to reduce our humidity from, in this area, it can literally be 90, 95% um, humidity, and we're able to drive that down to that 45 or 50 percent humidity level very easily and only use our AC systems for cooling, which makes it much more efficient because we're running a little bitty unit here most of the time to dehumidify and only kicking on our big units when we need to cool and when we properly insulate and air seal, we're not having to cool as much. Now, to the insulation and the air sealing, this is a tight home. We haven't done a blower door test on it yet, um, but I'm guessing that we're probably going to be somewhere definitely under three, probably under one um, when we're all done with this whole thing, somewhere lower than one ACH 60 in this house. So that means that the air that's in here will stay in here for a very long time if we don't have some strategy for both replenishing the stale air with fresh air and filtering that air. Now, this is where this becomes really cool. The dehumidifier is doing a lot for comfort, but not so much for health without the secret weapon of fresh air intake. So this unit is equipped with a, or it comes separately, but we have installed a powered Y damper on it. So right after this dehumidifier, before it goes into its return here, it splits. It has a return that comes from indoor air, and it also has a return going to the outdoor air to where we can actually pull air in from the outside, inside. It runs through the dehumidifier before it's introduced to our um, air conditioner. Actually, we have this ducted completely separate. So this is a complete separate ducting system than our HVAC, but it's dehumidified before it's introduced into the air into our house. So we're not having to dump humid air in and then pick it back up through our returns and dehumidify it later. We're dehumidifying it on its way in. So we're able to bring in fresh air based on our schedule. We can tell it how much fresh air we want brought in per hour, and then this will automatically bring fresh air in. This means that it is a pressurized system, so we're bringing air in and we're not giving it an escape valve out. But this isn't a completely tight house. It's not an, a balloon that we've made. It's going to be able to find its way out. And because it's pressurized, any leaks that we do have here, it's going to be forcing any um, particulates out of the house instead of a a um, depressurized house where you're sucking things into the house. So definitely my preferred way of doing it if we're not doing an ERV or an HRV system. And in this part of the world, the dehumidifier is running so much of the time that I really like this um, setup and it prevents us from having to buy yet another piece of equipment. If budget's absolutely no concern at all, then throw on your favorite ERV and HRV, you're still gonna to have to have a dehumidifier because it will not get rid of the humidity load. So this is what we decided to do on this house and it is my preferred way. I lived in a house like this for uh, 
about three years with this exact same setup and it was great. We never had any issues with indoor air quality and we never had any issues with humidity. So really like this. That's how you get the fresh air in and that's how you get it dehumidified. But what about the air that is just in the house circulating, right? We're not replacing the air with outside air um, on a one-to-one -one ratio, you know, we're not just constantly pumping it through. We're only putting a little bit of fresh air to replenish stale air. And the outdoor air might have pollen and particulates that we don't want to be sucking in and putting into our indoor air. Now, in general, outdoor air is much cleaner than indoor air. You read all kinds of statistics. I think April air says five times. Indoor air is five times as polluted as outdoor air. But I've seen those numbers range all over the place. Like in Chinese cities, I've seen the outdoor air quality be much worse than indoor air quality. But in general, it's the consensus that indoor air quality is generally worse than outdoor air. However, there is a bunch of pollen and other things outside that you want to clean up and you don't want to have circulating in your house. And this is where the third stage of air, indoor air quality comes into play in this house. So we're dehumidifying, we're bringing in fresh air, but then the air that's in here, we're actually putting through a very fine MERV 13 filter. Now, MERV is a rating from one to 16, and I see charts from one to 20. I'm not sure exactly where it peters out, whether it's 16 or 20, but in most air filtration systems, you're gonna see from one to 16, 16 being the best filtration, one being the worst filtration, and commonly you're gonna see HVAC filtration systems be anywhere from six, seven up to 13, and 13's about where they top out, although you can get all the way through HEPA rated filters, and HEPA is the stuff that is taking away all of your particulates, um, well, all of your airborne particulates, basically. So if we start really low on the scale, it's just getting out the big, airborne dust particles that you can that you can actually see. So MERV rating is just a quick way of saying what size of particulates can this filter take out of the air, starting at MERV 1 and going up to MERV 16, although you see most air conditioning filtration being somewhere between 6 on the low end and 13 on the high end. Um, you can get higher all the way to a HEPA rated filter where it's taking out nearly all of your airborne particulates. But 13 is a general, really good filter for in indoor air quality. And that's gonna reduce 90% um, of your spores and any allergens that are floating around in the air. It's gonna take out 90% of the smaller particulates that you can't see with your eye. And then it's gonna be 75% of the really small particulates like 0.3 to one microns and a micron is just a 124,500th of an inch so it's super small and this is going down to like 0.3 of that super small measurement so it's really really small like think um, pet dander is taken out um, all of your pollen is taken out or 90 percent of your pollen is taken out if you're a smoker it will actually take out a lot of that cigarette smoke it's not going to take it all out you'd have to go up on your merv rating but for it to take out cigarette smoke you see how small of particulate this will actually um, take out so we are constantly circulating our air through a m series of merv 13 filters actually the whole strategy on this thing is we've got Upstairs is its own HVAC unit, and we have the MERV 13 filter, and we have um, HVAC. The downstairs is where we have our dehumidifier with our air circulation coming in, and that has a MERV 13. And then in the master suite, we have another dehumidifier, and we have a filtration system over there as well. So we've got three big pleated filters that are filtering this air. Now, if your equipment's not rated to run a MERV 13 filter, I don't recommend that you just go out and buy one that fits in your, in your air filter box and throw it in there because you can be increasing the static pressure so much that you're actually shortening the life of your equipment. So you can't just throw any filter in your box that you want. However, April Air takes care of that high static pressure by making a really large box. This is a full, our whole return is covered in a large box. And then that filter 
is pleated very deeply. So we've got like a three inch filter that is pleated across a large, um, I think this one's like a 20 by 20 inch cross section. So a big filter area that is able to let a lot of air pass through. The reason pleating works is you can think about taking a huge piece of filter material and then putting it together with little folds and you can get it pushed all the way together like this thick. And then if you spread it all the way out, it'd be original size. But what if you stopped a little bit beforehand? You, you squish it all the way together to where it's as small as possible and then you just pull it back a little bit. You still have the whole area of filtration and airflow allowed to go through, but you're pleading back and forth like an accordion. Well, when we have a small air filter, we can only accordion in very small increments. But as we get that deeper, we can have a bigger accordion and let more surface area of filter be there and lower that static pressure. And that's how we are handling our indoor air quality. I highly recommend that you think about indoor air quality, what's your strategy for addressing indoor air quality because as we know with coronavirus, I saw an article just the other day that said, uh, ACs are spreading coronavirus and it's like, eh, sort of, you know, like most things in the news, it, you gotta read the details and you have to educate yourself a little bit. But it is true that this MERV 13 filter won't trap viruses. In fact, you gotta get really, really fine before it traps a virus and it's just not worth it for a home like this because if somebody has a virus like that, you're going to pick it up just through regular interaction. Um, the only way that this filter can trap something is if it goes through that something. To that end, I nearly forgot this, to that end, the best time to be running your AC filtration is when you're vacuuming and dusting because that rigorous beating of the carpets and putting dust particles in the air will put them up in the air and then they'll get sucked through your system into the filter. Um, so you always want to be running your uh, HVAC when you're doing your vacuum if you're using your filters to pull those particulates out. Another thing is you may think about just running your HVAC fan 24-7 so that you're constantly filtering your air. The filter doesn't do any good if your HVAC's not running. In a house this tight, this well insulated with our indoor air quality being taken care of with a separate unit and then being dehumidified, our HVACs probably won't run that much just for cooling. They're going to be cycling on and off at a very low rate. So we'll probably want to run at least one of the units pretty constantly to get that filter engaged and be filtering our air. That's it for real this time. That's it. Thanks so much for watching. Comment below if you have any questions. Um, we'll try to answer them. Go check out April Air. There's a link below for those guys. Like the video if you liked it. Subscribe if we burned it. Go follow us over at Instagram at Jordan Smith Builds at Smith House Co. Um, we'll see you next time on Smith House.